Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, comrades of all kinds, thank you for joining me no matter where you're at across country around this big, beautiful, whoa, the old hopeful one. She's just ready to play. It don't matter that I'm doing videos over here. <laughs> it don't matter. She's jumping over here. She's jumping up there. She's trying to get up here. It does not matter. She's trying to freaking pull the plugs on everything. She's playing with the freaking shade strings. I mean, come on. <laughs> But she's fun. She, you know, she, look, it's time to go to bed for me. Not time for her. She wants to play. If your foot moves, she's going for it. If your head moves, she's pouncing on it. So you, you can, you can tell, you can tell what kind of life we're going to have here with hope. Now I want to talk about how the left absolutely never lets me down. The left never lets me down. They're like a freaking, they're like herding cats. There you go. Hey, little kitty. They're like herding cats. Whereas the right wing, they're like a pack of dogs. They're like a pack of freaking dogs. They're always on the move and they're always oriented towards the goal, which is seizing power. They have power centers already and they try to seize the powers of institution furthermore. Create apparatuses, of, uh, apparatus of oppression here, apparatus of oppression there, aimed at their enemies. You know how they treat the law, by the way, the right wing. I got to point this out. You know how they treat the law. The law has no ability to hold them accountable. It's to be wielded against their enemies, their political enemies. That's what the right wing does. They, I mean, look how intense they are. I mean, they kill people who disagree with them constantly. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, Nazis, Confederates, you freaking name them. You disagree with them, they're going to forget. They're going to blow your ass up. Okay? And it just speaks to their level of intensity. If we could bring a tenth of that to the table, we'd be wiped, we'd be mopping the floor with them. There's just too many of us. Okay, but the problem is we are like herding cats. Instead of focusing on the things we agree upon and going out and accomplishing those goals, we focus on the small amount of things we don't agree on and form a circular firing squad and blow each other away. That's what we do. It's unbelievable to me. Now, this situation surrounds Anna Kasparian and her opinion on some criminal justice. Okay, a, a, this discussion is particularly surrounding one case. The guy had already assaulted people like 40, excuse me, he had already been arrested like 41 times. Some of them had been assaults. You see the video, you know, he had just been released. Uh, assaults an Asian woman. By the way, I had read this at the time on Next Shark, which was repeat, reporting on all the random assaults on Asian folks. Assaults an Asian woman, gets let out like a freaking, after a, a, you know one day of his freaking sentence, goes on, breaks someone's collarbone. You get what I'm saying? Now, this guy was mentally ill. That is true. But he's also assaulting and committing crimes against people who are also mentally ill. And being mentally ill does not give you a free pass. It's not a get out of jail free card. Now, do you send him to Rikers Island? I don't think so. <laughs> are you cool with that? Are you cool with sending mentally ill people there? I'm not. I think we should shut down Rikers Island. Okay? But this video is not about people's responses to that necessarily. It's not about her responses to them. It's actually about deciphering between progressive in reactionary solutions to problem. one, problems. One of my favorite things to do in politics. It really is. So you, you name a problem or something that somebody thinks is a problem. And you say, what would be a progressive solution to this? And what would be a reactionary one? Can I recognize it? Can I recognize it? Can I decipher between the two? Can I juxtapose them for people to help them understand why one is progressive, why one is reactionary? Okay, so uh, uh, s some of the more obvious examples when it comes to uh, reactionary policies would be increasing the size of the military. Okay, uh, but more police, more prisons, okay, depending on the problem. A reactionary response. A progressive response to some things might be spending more money on education, spending more money on this, spending more money on that. You get the freaking picture. So I went and made a list. I went and made a list of very popular things to debate in the United States and I wrote down what solutions reactionaries offer and what is actually the progressive answer. So I did both for you. Now, the first was competing with China. 
The first was competing with China. Now, I don't consider China to be an adversary of the American worker. Okay, that's not how I choose to look at them. All right. I see them as just geopolitical competition in essence. But that's not how the ruling class sees them. So they have a reactionary solution to their rise. By the way, about to fall into Thucydides' trap. If you don't know what Thucydides' trap is, I'll summarize it really quickly. It's when there is an emerging power that is clearly going to pass up the incumbent power, which would be the United States in this situation, in the incumbent power, instead of figuring out a progressive solution to that, okay, maybe to stay ahead of them in a progressive fashion, maybe to just deal with it in a progressive fashion, the fact that they might get passed up, they fall into a, a Thucydides trap, which is going to war with them, and usually they lose. <laughs> usually the incumbent power loses, and we can go over it throughout history, by the way. Matter of fact, I've probably done videos on that. So China, what would a reactionary solution be to their rise? Trump had one. Trump had a reactionary answer. Trade war, trade war. How did that work out? We lost. <laughs> we lost. And it really hurt the American worker. How about more troops in Japan and Korea? That's a reactionary response. How about antagonizing with the usage of the unique region of Taiwan? How about that? Sending troops there, sending Nancy Pelosi, uh, floating the USS Ronald Reagan through the Straits of Taiwan, a carrier air group. I mean, talk about serious but unserious, if you get what I'm saying. Just prick waving of children. It's unbelievable. Um, agitate our allies in the region. Okay. But, uh, and by agitate, I don't mean go against them. I mean literally agitate them to go against China. So sending nuclear capable submarines to Australia, that's an agitation. Okay, that's agitation, make no doubt about it. Forming AUKUS, trying to turn Aishan into something it's not. Uh, this one should be obvious. Class antagonism in Hong Kong. Class antagonism in Tibet. Class antagonism in Xinjiang. A common strategy of the United States, by the way. Now, what would a progressive solution be? Those are all, were all reactionary solutions for answers that would not work, of course, and have not worked. What would a progressive solution be to the rise, crisis, to, uh, excuse me, a progressive response be to the rise of China. How about raising the wage? <laughs> How about taxing the rich? How about student unions, tenant unions, labor unions? How about bringing jobs back by actually making things here? Think about it for a second. One of the reasons you have so much inflation is simply because of the supply chain. It really is. The supply chain's not efficient enough. It's not close enough. Well, how about you move it closer? It might, doesn't have to be local. Maybe it's just regional. Okay. And then you make it more efficient. You move it closer. You make it more efficient. And then you're likely to be making it here. Legalize marijuana. Decriminalize other drugs. Bring home troops. Like the Air National Guard. The Coast Guard. The National Guard making us more ready, making us safer, spending that time, energy, and money here instead of elsewhere, instead of outstretching ourselves, bringing the troops home from Iraq, Syria, Somalia, bringing the troops home from Germany, South Korea, Japan, making ourselves more ready, once again, spending that time, energy, and money here on other things. Let's go to crime. Crime is the next one. Reactionary responses to, to a crisis in crime, an upsurge in crime, would be more police, more prisons, more right-wing DAs, more right-wing judges. Well, we're not down with that. <laughs> That's a bunch of baloney. We know it doesn't work. We know it exacerbates the problem. When you have more brutal police, when you have more brutal prisons, when you have more brutal military, you have a more brutal society. Our answer would be UBH. Take a million people. Take a million criminals. 
take a million criminals and give them all UBH, how many of them you think would stop committing crimes? Is it going to be all of them? I highly doubt it. You think a lot of them would if you gave them universal basic housing guaranteed for life? How much more of a stake they would feel like they have in society, in their community, at least? How they wouldn't want to screw this up for their family that gets their own universal basic housing? You get where I'm going with this? Yeah. UBI. Take a million criminals. Take a million criminals, not a million people, a million criminals. Because we know what the recidivism rate is. And give them UBI. Give them UBI. Give them UBH and UBI. How many of them do you think would stop committing crimes? The crimes that we're talking about. The crimes that we're imagining in our head. Okay, these crimes of desperation that can possibly turn violent. And very often, at least, lead to a moderate to extraordinary amount of property damage. And we want to respect people's personal property, don't we? Because that's an extension of them. We want to respect them. <laughs> you know, a, your personal property is different than a freaking, you know, a oligarch's estate. Come on. Universal health care. So they'd have health care. Their family would have, have, have health care. Their family would have UBI. Their family would have UBH. And they would have mental health care. You think a lot less... Look... Say what you want. That number is getting a lot smaller. The amount of them that would have uh, legitimate rate, uh, excuse me, would be part of the recidivism rate, if you will. Because remember, we're taking a million. If you want to take 10 million in your head, take 10 million in your head. If you want to take <laughs> every criminal on the planet and, and, and do it, do it in your head. It doesn't just have to be America. Do it in your head. Think about it. That number is getting a lot less with each policy. How about a jobs guarantee? <coughs> a jobs guarantee in a better environment. I'm talking an inundation of trees, plants, shrubs, bushes, flowers, green spaces. Very good for your mental health. And of course, you know, tenants unions, students unions, building relationships with labor unions, hopefully of the rank and file variety making people feel like they have a stake in things, like they're part of something, instead of being atomized, instead of every man for themselves. Now, healthcare. Do nothing would be a reactionary response. Charities, uh, eugenics, ACA was a reactionary response. How about a progressive response? Universal healthcare. <laughs> that's, 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 the real, that's the progressive response there. Some other things, though. Making sure the air is of a better quality. Cleaner air, fresher water, more pristine land, more flourishing wildlife. It's better for you. It balances the ecosystem. It is healthier for you. Eat better, exercise more. Be proactive, all that sort of stuff. Energy. A reactionary response to any sort of energy crisis we might have. Drill more, mine more. Invade somebody, steal it. That would be a reactionary solution. What would a progressive answer be? Let's go, let's go. This is fun. I love doing stuff like this. You could do this in a class or something. Uh, green energy, because what? Green energy is energy independence. Think about it. Who's going to stop the tide? Who's going to stop our tide? Nobody's going to stop our tide. Who's going to freaking blot out the sun so that we can't get solar energy? The tide for tidal energy, of course. Tidal, T-I-D-A-L. Okay, who's going to stop the wind so that we can't get wind energy? Who's going to stop us from developing better batteries for all of those things? Who's going to stop that? So, what, are they going to bomb us because we're doing that? Really? You're going to bomb the U.S.? Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's pretty general uh, and obvious. Okay, fossil fuels when needed, and obviously worker control of this stuff, nationalized control of it. That's a progressive response. Gun violence. <laughs> More guns. Do nothing. Arm teachers. Those are reactionary responses to the gun violence crisis. You know, the country that has a freaking mass casualty event every other day. Uh, obviously for us, we say a progressive answer would be 
Universal background checks, cool off periods, things like that, license, registration, insurance, okay? Think about it, Tra you know, your training and things like that. Clip limits, no hollow tips, the nonsense with the extra accessories, we don't need it, okay? That's before even getting to some serious guns. That's called having a progressive solution to the crisis. Immigration, build a wall, ban Muslims, more ICE agents, more de uh, ICE detention facilities. Baloney, that's a reactionary response. Our answer would be a jobs guarantee. Because they always, oh, they're taking our jobs. Well, are, do you support a jobs guarantee? So wait a second, you're concerned that immigrants are taking our jobs, but you don't support a jobs guarantee? Sounds like you just want to use immigrants as an excuse to freaking beat us over the head with. We're getting, we're getting a nice, we've been getting a lot of rain. I love it. I love the rain. It's very good for you. Okay, so you kind of get that. Uh, and the war on drugs. That A lot of these things, keep in mind, when I say UBH, I'm not just talking about the United States. When I say jobs guarantee, I'm not just talking about the United States. I'm talking globally, baby. I'm talking globally. Because think about it for a second. If you do these things in all these other countries, you're not going to get flooded with immigration to one country that's stable and doing all these wonderful socialist things. Because they're going to do it there. They're going to have a stake in their own country. Now, some people will still come and we welcome them and we embrace them. We protect the pilgrim. We safeguard the sojourner. We rally around the refugee because our moral compass says so. Because our moral foundation is solid. And the war on sex. And the war on sex. You're going to have a lot less human trafficking when you do some of this stuff. I guarantee it. Now, uh, I did uh, one on jobs and wages. A reactionary response to the situation would be lower wages, no regulations, no benefits, and child labor. That would be a right-wing response to the issues we have in the labor industry right now, in the labor market, whatever the hell you want to call it. I say unions for all, of course. Rank and file, of course. We're talking tenants unions, students unions, labor unions, all that good stuff. A jobs guarantee, a living wage guarantee, and we don't just do it in the United States, we do it all over the place. That's a progressive response. <laughs> now the prison population one, okay, so um, it should be obvious. A reactionary response would be more prisons, who cares, release them all. Uh, release a few Perhaps in order to sabotage, pick the violent ones, the ones that we don't feel like dealing with because it's for profit anyway. It's for profit anyway, and the certain ones are more expensive to deal with. I get rid of them. Mentally ill ones more to deal with. I get rid of them. Okay. That would be a reactionary response to the crisis. A progressive response would be independent counseling, group counseling, medication. Okay. Cancel private contracts. And the war on drugs. And the war on sex. Abolish the death penalty. Abolish solitary confinement. No more torture. Get rid of cash bail. Get rid of civil asset forfeiture. Demilitarize the police. You get what I'm saying? Release nonviolent offenders. So you have just enough room. For all the violent ones. The ones that just ain't fucking getting it, pal. You get what I'm saying? Look, I felt like doing one on that because I see people just t tearing each other up. Mutuals over this. Entire discussion over this. One case of this repeat violent offender who should probably be in some sort of mental hospital. There's no doubt about it. But also can't just be roaming the streets to assault. In some situations, other mentally ill people. Can't have it. You have to have progressive solutions to all of these crises. And that includes attacking it in many different ways. You can't just say, this one policy will fix the entire problem. Societies are complex. People are complex. We know better, do better. Guys, I'm going to leave it at that. You know what's up.